I'm John Bowden. I do believe this is our eighth interview with Steve Hackett. I don't think I've interviewed anyone eight times. Maybe Rick Emmett. Here's part one. Steve Hackett, Genesis Revisited, Seconds Out, and a whole bunch more. When you heard it, then there were three. What was your reaction? When Because, I mean, I ask members all the time when they leave a band, did you listen to the next album? But did, did yes. you wait to listen to it? Did, when did you hear it first? Um, Tony Smith played it to me, funnily enough. And um, I heard it and I thought, well, you know, that's what they sound like without me. That's It's it's a three-piece. Um, there was another three-piece that I was hearing around about the same time, which was Mike Rutherford with Small Creeps Day. And I felt that in terms of production, Small Creeps Day and the, and the drum sound with, with Simon Phillips, I complimented him on that. He thought the drum sound was... was was ruined compared to what it was at first. But for my money, I thought in terms of production, it sounded sounded really good. He told me the same um, thing. So I, I was more drawn to that. Who said that? Uh, Simon Phillips told me the same thing. He, yeah, that he, he didn't like the, the, the production, didn't like the drum sound. But what did you think about the drum sound? Well, I, that's one of my favorite albums of all time. And, and so go, I've, I've interviewed everyone but Mike about that mm. album that were on there. Uh, Noel, I'm interviewing him in a couple of weeks. I've interviewed him multiple times, but you know what? Yes. When you said that last time in the last interview, yes. you wouldn't believe the yes. reaction we got. That I said of all the Genesis solo albums, if you can't count your own, yes. people yes. just react. They were so pleasantly surprised that you said "Small Cream Stay." <laughs> oh yes, no. Well, well the thing is, um, there's something important about this. If I can remember what I was just thinking, um, the uh, the audience are the true owners. You see, you liked it. Presumably, you liked the drum sound as the drummer. Um, you weren't involved. I liked the drum sound. I liked Noel McCullough's voice. I liked the approach. It worked for me. Whenever I ask anyone who made the album, they'll tell me what's wrong with it. <laughs> who are the true owners? Isn't that so often the case? And it's so often the case um, when it's a live gig where a band will think they've just played a terrible set and the audience have been in heaven watching it. So, yeah. The Who are the true are, owners? Are the that's true so owners. cool. That is yes, so that cool. Is I, well, you know, that's I, I, I've had a lot of time to think about this, about who owns who owns the music, those who have it in their heart, not those who produced it from their head. Do you think it keeps you young? Because, I mean, if I was in your position, and I think I've mm. told you a few times, when I do my work, I'm 62 now, and I'm working harder yep. but more smarter, enjoying what I'm doing. I'm more conscious mm. of what I'm doing. Uh, yes. Bill Bruford told me his best years were, were in his 60s, and I know you've worked with Bill, but how do you feel? Right. How do you look at your career at, at your age? And you seem to be on top of your game. Well, um, I like getting things right, but I also like surprising myself. And um, little bits of equipment absolutely thrill me when the sound is right. So the sound is right, and I'm revisiting, for instance, Camino Royale, which is a track that was on Highly Strung. And um, there was something that happened on the original, which had attitude, but I was never able to get the sound right with the original equipment live. And so I realized what I've got different is slacker strings, and I'm doing wider vibrato on it so that each note it does, does something. Um, and I think, yeah, it's this, it, there's, there's a subtle shift in, in, in what I do, you know, it's not just about speed and I can do speed, whereas I couldn't at one time quite in the way that I wanted to be able to do. If I wanted to keep blistering, I can just about do that, you know, but um, uh, sometimes you do. Yes, yeah, sometimes you don't want to hold back. We, we went through Camino Royale and it was, we were doing it and I thought it's a bit too jazzy and it's, and I said, I don't think it needs a breakdown section in the middle. I think we just need to keep up the energy the whole time and salvos, salvos, and keep it coming so that you don't have time to draw breath, really. And it worked much better. Everyone thought, yeah, it's got all that stuff that we want, something that the knife has, for instance. You know, it doesn't really draw breath very much. It's got a little quiet section in the middle that's a little bit questionable of its time. But, hey, you know, it's like, okay, pause for breath before the next onslaught really 
Uh, <laughs> yeah. well, is, is it work though to you? Because I look at what I do as for the first time in the last five years, I do what I do and I don't really can, I, I, I'm kind of enjoying myself. Well, how do you look at yes. it? Do you, is it work or is it sometimes work? How do you look at it? Uh, I think it's only work when it's going wrong. You know, I, I think that when it's, when it's catching fire, um, you think, oh yeah, I'm, I'm so proud of this. I'm so proud of all the material, you know. Uh, we did Ace of Wands. We're thinking of starting with Ace of Wands. And the band take it, and the, the original is recorded really, really fast. And we started to do it live years ago, uh, slower. But actually, I was doing it with Jarby, the Hungarian band, in um, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And they took it at, at the original pace. And I thought, yeah, this actually suits it. It gives it something um, extraordinary. Again, you, you know, you're not pausing for breath. So um, it's this kind of, oh, my God, what's going on? How is that possible? That aspect of bam, 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 bam. Um, there was an expression, funnily enough, that, that the late, great Ian MacDonald used, you know, a band that can turn on a dime, you know, that aspect of, that's it, isn't it? Pirouetting on a needlehead in a way so that there's a change, there's a change, there's a change, there's... There's a moment of silence. Where's this coming from? Bam, bam, bam. And so the ideal way to receive all of this is I haven't ever had a note this guy or his band did ever before. And if you come to it with newness, with, without any, any idea of what you're going to receive, um, that's, you know, that's it. Will we ever get virgin audiences at my age? Perhaps not. But on the other hand, it's great not to have to slog up through the clubs again and do all of that, <laughs> even though there were some great moments that happened there. But um, part of being known is you can never, you can be more experienced, you can be better at what you do, and I like to think I am. You can't be um, a new face on the block. You can't be a new kid on the block. That isn't going to, that isn't there. But you get something else, which is you realise that a lot of other players were influenced by things that I did and not exactly dismissed, but marginalized. And that informed their playing. And you realize that, you know, one famous guitarist will say, oh, you know, I like the harmony playing that you did on so-and-so, which is why I did that. And another guy will go, well, you know, liked tapping. And I decided to make that, you know, pretty much my raison d'etre. And, um, it's part of what it's all about, isn't it? But the, yeah. the, I think the voyage of discovery goes on all the time within yourself, with others, um, refining and getting better at it and just being able to go, you know, all sorts of things that I wish I could have done at one time. You just hear something, you just think, how is that possible? You know, miracles, but they're built very slowly. Miracles don't happen overnight, do they? You you must know that as a drummer with technique where, you know, those things that seem absolutely stunning, you know, you'll think, oh, well, achievements seem so little in retrospect. We'll have more from Steve Hackett the next few days. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel and share our videos. Links to Steve Hackett in the top of the description. If you want to help the channel, there's Patreon links and PayPal links at the very top as well. Make sure to like the video. This is Rock History Music.